This year's field season was our third field season to Antarctica. Uh, we've involved Miami students in all of our field season at the undergraduate level and the graduate level. For example, we had an undergraduate who came last year and he came on this season as well. Uh, we'll be continuing our ongoing studies in Antarctica and we have several field seasons planned coming up. Our major study sites are in remote field sites on the Antarctic continent in an area called the Dry Valleys and these sites are only accessible by helicopter. So to get to our sites, we have to fly with our gear to our lake sites. Once we get to the lake sites, to access our samples, we have to drill through three to six meters of permanent ice, which permanently caps a distinct microbial community that lives in each of these lakes and has been isolated there for thousands of years. The drilling takes approximately two days um, and then we prepare, we have a sample hole prepared to actually collect the microorganisms that we're interested in. Collection of the microorganisms includes um, using a hand winch, collecting samples with a water sample called a Niskin bottle, and then we spend extensive time out in the remote field camps preparing our samples for preservation purposes to bring back to Miami University and do a wide variety of different physiological and molecular studies. So we spend a lot of time in our labs actually filtering liters and liters of water onto filter paper and preserving this filter paper for later analyses. Um, for example, we harvested probably over a thousand liters in water this year and this included um, me and the students basically hand carrying hundreds of pounds of lake water from our sampling site back to our um, remote labs and stabilizing our samples there. So in addition to the opportunities within our laboratory for research for undergraduates and graduates, we've integrated our Antarctic samples into a new course in microbial ecology. The students within this course are senior undergraduates and graduate students and they will be working directly with samples that we've collected from Antarctica. So they will have the opportunity to learn uh, top-level molecular biology techniques as well as the ability to cultivate uncultivatable or difficult to culture microorganisms from an extreme environment. This is really exciting for the students who um, of course not all of them have the possibility to go to Antarctica, they learn new techniques and this work is novel. Nobody's ever worked with these samples before and so the students are aware of that, that they're really on the cutting edge of designing science projects which on samples which have never been studied before. So our major goal in our current research project is to understand the role of these special microorganisms called protists. These organisms are important throughout all worldwide aquatic systems and of course they're important in our lakes as well. We use our lakes as basically natural laboratories to study how these organisms modify carbon in these environments and how things like environmental change might influence the way these organisms behave and the way they're transforming carbon. The applications of this on a larger scale to larger, more complex aquatic systems like oceans and lakes is to understand how global carbon cycling might be influenced by major change like climate change as well as um, pollution concerns like, uh, like agriculture runoff. In addition to the lake water that we spend a lot of time sampling, we always have the opportunity to take samples from other interesting environments in the dry valleys. So there are a number of researchers that work on a wide variety of different research questions there. And one of the research questions that we were looking at this year is addressing the microbial diversity in very extreme microbial mats that live on the surface of the lakes. Our undergraduate, Nick, is sampling a cyanobacterial mat. He's using tweezers to prevent any contamination of the sample. This sample was later used to start novel cultures to isolate new cyanobacterial organisms as well as to do molecular biology on the mats to identify the organisms that reside in the mats. Cyanobacterial mats are really, really special microbial environment. They're basically a refuge for other microbes in harsh environments like Antarctica. They're also thought to be ancient refuges for events like global glaciation periods, and they're very, very important in the evolution of life. 
We love doing Antarctic science and we think we're the luckiest researchers in the world being able to go to this beautiful environment and ask the scientific questions that we do.